Today's, today's class is going to be about the third bracha. So if you have with you the Siddur, daily prayer book, we're looking at the third bracha, third blessing, which starts from, with Baruch HaTah Bless you, God. Matir Asurim. He who releases the bound. So as we recall, the, all these blessings are supposed to be recited in conjunction with doing things in the morning. So you wait, you, you wake up to the alarm clock, to the rooster in the morning, you, you make one bracha. And then afterwards you open your eyes, you say, oh, I have eyesight, thank God, thank God I have vision. And then the third bracha is once your body starts to move a little bit, right? you were in bed, you were like locked in bed, and now you're moving out of bed, you're in a uh, moving mode. So then we say, thank God, who releases the bound. Uh, we say this many times in the prayer, he releases the bound. Matir Asurim. He releases those who are imprisoned or bound or tied up. Or, you know. So those are the blessings we, uh, we say. And um, why do we say this blessing? We say this blessing every day. And then many of us are not bound, but we thank Hashem for movement. For being able to move. And uh, this is a great uh, blessing. Can you guys hear me, by the way? If you hear me, give me a thumbs up. Okay. Because over here it says to me, me it, it, my, my computer says, I'm unstable. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'm unstable a little bit, so, you know. But this is all about the ability to be unstable, the ability to, to, um, Sorry about that. Hello. Here we go again. The ability to be able to move around. Unfortunately, we know many people who are can move around much. Uh, they might be in a wheelchair. or So we thank Hashem that we have the ability to be able to move. And even those that are wheelchair can move a little bit. We thank Hashem for movement. Movement is a very important thing that we have in life. Um, but, uh, you know, we say this many times, we say this in the Amida as well. He who releases, those that are, are bound. But really, as every bracha, like we mentioned before, every blessing has meanings and deeper meanings. So the simple meaning is that we can physically move, we can get around, and then there is the deeper meaning of what this bracha means. What does it mean to release the bound? Bound. This is the thanking Hashem for freedom. Releasing the bound is that we have, Hashem gives us freedom. Freedom of choice, freedom to be able to move, to, to do things. And this is, this is the we're freedom. We're not slaves in Egypt. You know, every day a Jew is supposed to say, thank God for taking me out of Egypt. Egypt. Can't hear me now? Can you hear me? Thank God for taking me out of Egypt. This is a wonderful thing that as we say every day, every day it says, and we say in the Haggadah Shal Pesach, every day a Jew has to say, Bechol Dor Vidar, and the Alter Rebbe adds, Bechol Yom Vayom, every day we have to thank God for taking us out of Egypt. In the Shema, we always say, I am your God who is taking you out of the land of Egypt. This is a very important part of what we, what we, what we pray every day. So we, we thank Hashem for our physical movement, and also our spiritual freedom. One of the, one of the greatest sites that people go to in America is a place called Liberty Bell, where when the Americans, when they came to America, they were, they were being persecuted religiously in the rest of the world. When they came to America, the pilgrims, they felt they had to put up this big Liberty Bell. The bell has a crack in it. And that bill, it says, and you should, we shall pro proclaim freedom upon the land. So freedom is a very important thing, but not just physically, but also spiritually and emotionally. We need to free ourselves from the shackles, from the bondage. And every day we thank God, we say, Hashem, thank you. Matira Surim, he releases those that amount. And in the Haggadah of Pesach, we say, if God would not have taken us out of the land of Egypt, we still would have been slaves. 
Now one wonders what kind of prayer is that? In the Haggadah, we say that right at the beginning of Gadash of Pesach, we say, if God would not have taken us out of Egypt, we still would have been slaves. If you would have been slaves in Egypt, does that make a lot of sense to you? I mean, everybody has been released from the different slaveries around the world. The world is now a world. We're all slaves. The slaves in the South were freed. The slaves in the countries are freed. There's hardly a place in the world where you still have slavery. Maybe some places. But... So what are the chances that Jews would still be slaves in Egypt today? Not very high. So, so why do we say the Elu? And if God would not have taken us out of Egypt, we would still be slaves today. So the answer is yes. We might have been freed physically, but there was another element to the freedom of this, from the slavery of Egypt, and that is the spiritual freedom. God didn't just free the Jews. He didn't just take us out of Egypt and, and take us out that we don't have to work hard anymore. But he made us, he gave us freedom in our minds, in our hearts. He gave us a, a uh, the ability to, to feel true freedom. And this is something that's very, very important for us, each and every one of us, is that we be freed not just physically, but spiritually. You know, there were many Jews that were in the Holocaust and they were, they were there. Maybe they were in the shackles of slavery there. And they were being forced to work, but they were free in their soul. You can be locked up somewhere in a jail, but you can be a free person in your mind. And that's what's most important is that we are free with free in our minds. You know, there's a story during, during the, uh, during the Holocaust, just when it started, they came into a town in Hungary. There was a rabbi that was known as the Kloisenberger Rebbe. He lived, he was the Rav in a city called Kloisenberg. The Nazis came marching in, and the first thing they used to do was they would try to make a mockery of the, of the Jews there. Now, the Kloisenberger Rebbe, you have to know, he was spared, but he lost his wife and 11 children. His name was Rabbi Kustiel of Kloisenberg. Kloisenberg of the city. Rabbi Kustiel Halberstam. He was a survivor of the Holocaust and eventually he made his way to New York and then he went to Netanya and he dedicated his life to, uh, to helping other Jews. And he founded a hospital called the Laniato Hospital which today is one of the most famous hospitals in Israel. And it was all because of this man, the survivor of the Holocaust. He came back and he remarried and he moved to Israel. And he had a very big Hasidic following. It's a big gone, a big studious man. The seal of Klosenberg, Halberstam. So he came to, uh, before, when, when the Nazis marched into Klosenberg, First thing they would do was they would they would bring the rabbi in this town square, bring everybody out, and make a mockery of the rabbi. That was their modus operandi. That's the way they, they conducted themselves, these, these barbarous Nazis. So they grabbed the rabbi and they threw him on the floor, picked him up, and started pulling his beard and taunting him. Say, Rabbi. They said in front of everybody, you Jews, you say you are the chosen people. Do you still think you are the chosen people now? They went, Trask. He said, yes. He said, yes, I am. We are the chosen people. They gave him a whack, knocked him down. A Nazi, brutal Nazi says to him, you still think you're the chosen people? He says, yes, of course. Gave him another punch in the mouth and started to bleed from his mouth, the rabbi. He's lying there on the floor. The Nazi says, you still think you can call yourself the chosen people in this condition? He says, yes, even more. He says, as long as you're the one that's, that's delivering the brutal blows, and we are keeping our dignity, 
and our honor. So then we are the chosen people, not you. As they say, freedom is a state of mind. You could be beaten by a Nazi, you could be down on the floor, but in your mind, you're still the chosen people. The Jews, when we were in Europe and they were in, in places and they were really suffering a lot, but they were free people. They always ask the question why the Hasidim wear the black garb on Shabbos? They wear special black, long black garb and they wear hats and streimels kind of old-fashioned clothing. Where does that come from? The Hasidim wear these, these, these garments. What's an old-fashioned clothes? Come on, come on, rabbis. Get with the times, you know, people say. Put on some, uh, you know, some casual clothing. What are you getting dressed up like like the the the, the uh, Polish nobility in Poland? <laughs> the answer is uh, these garments are very important for the for the for the rabbis. The Jews on Shabbos, why? Because they are a sign of our freedom, of who we are. Because what we what's the background of these stories? What's the background of wearing these long kaftans and these long long uh, these 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 old fashioned garments? Many wear streimels. Where does that all come from? It comes from because when the Jews were in the shtetl. They were persecuted a whole week. And on Shabbos, we came home and we sat down with our families, we sat down with our children, and we said, Kindalach, now on Shabbos, we are the kings and the queens. We are the nobility. We are free. The people outside are the prisoners, the ones that persecute us the whole week. They're not the real free people. We are the real free people. So you get dressed up like as if they were the noble nobility. They would dress up like kings and queens and the princes. In those days, that was the clothing they would wear. And they would dress in that to show the world and to show their family that on Shabbos, we're free. On Shabbos, we're matrasurim. We are not tied down. We are not victims. We are the, we are the winners. So they would dress themselves in these garments to show the freedom of Pati Rasur. And that's why the Hasidim kept that garb. Not to lose it. We always have to remind ourselves years later what happened years ago about how we, the Jews, despite all the circumstances, we're able to be free people. people. The truth of the matter is today we shouldn't really speak saying these brachas, because today we're not being persecuted. We live Baruch Hashem in a free country. I mean, unfortunately, we do have some anti-Semitism. We do have some terrible tragedies that are happening in Israel. People that hate the Jews. But we are free people. But we want to teach our children that there was a time when we were not so free. And even though we, we appeared to be not so free, we kept our heads up high. Now, Victor Frankl is a fellow who wrote a book called In Search of Meaning. Where he created the whole psychological Logan therapy. And he wrote, he analyzed the people that were survivors in the Holocaust. And while he was, he was in Auschwitz, and he watched other people there, and he saw that those that, that, that had a meaning to life the Nazis were not able, able to get them. Those that got depressed, they passed away. But those that, that had a reason to live, they were free people. So they were able to transcend the circumstances despite the cold and the difficulties and the hard work and the labor and the, everything was going on. They were able to be. And he wrote a whole philosophy, he made a whole psychology based on that saying that the greatest drive, human drive, is the drive for finding meaning in life. And the Jews have always found meaning to life, and that's what kept us, that's why we're the oldest people. That's why Jews, all the other civilizations disappeared, because the other civilizations were based just on brute force. The Jews, our survival, the secret to our survival was, that was never our strength, wasn't it? Yes, we had big armies at times, and but that's not what defines us. What defines us is our freedom, our inner freedom. Inner freedom is much more powerful.
So the Jews, wherever they were, they could have been in the most difficult circumstance. We were free. But today, Baruch Hashem, we have freedom in America and Canada. Oh, Canada. Yeah, we say thank you, Canada, for giving us the freedom. Baruch Hashem, we're living in a nice place. Most people around the world are in a place of freedom. But nonetheless, we can also get to situations where we become victims of, of circumstances and we get locked down again. And we still have to make a bracha every day. Matir, asurim. Thank you, God, for freeing those that are tied down. How do we do that? How do we how do we how do we free ourselves? And the answer is, well, what, what do we have to free ourselves from? Where everything is good. The answer is not so good. We still can be, we still can be uh, locked down to materialism, and we still can be locked down to money, and we still can be locked down to our mortgages and our houses, and paying for our cars, and paying for the kids. <laughs> All day we can be busy with making money, running ourselves crazy after the mighty dollar. So we, are, we, we could be truly in jail. How many people do I know that every day you speak to them, they, 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 their head is like so locked up in these things. As one, one fellow once came to the Rebbe Rashad and he, he told the Rebbe about his business. He had a business with, with boots. And the whole day he was making boots. He asked the Rebbe for a bracha. So before he left the Rebbe, the Rebbe said to him, he says, it's incredible how you work on your business of boots all day. But, you know, I've seen people put their feet into their boots. That's a normal thing. But a head in the boots, your head is in the boots, the Rebbe says. All day you're thinking about your boots, making more boots and making more money. He says, that's not a healthy thing. Healthy is when the feet are in the boots. But our brain is in the boots. The mind is in the boots. You're all consumed by the mighty dollar to make money a whole day. You're busy with your boot business. This is no good. Then you are tied down. You're locked. We ask Hashem every day. We should be free people. We should have true freedom. Not just freedom from persecution. Not just freedom from anti-Semites, but also freedom, spiritual freedom, even in the, in the land of the free. We still can be really tied down, locked down to materialism and physicality. So we need to also release ourselves from that. So this is what we have here, the bracha of matir asurim. We should all free ourselves. Just give me one second over here. So what is true, true freedom? True freedom is when we're able to tap into our neshama, tap into our soul. You know, it's when you're able to live your life based on the neshama that's within you. I just heard, you know, somebody once walked into the shul and came to the, to the people there in the shul and says, I'm looking for a tzaddik. Where is there a tzaddik in the shul? A tzaddik, a righteous person. So the fellow that, that, that was there said, I'm, I'm a new person in the shul. I don't know where there is a tzaddik here. So this fellow was all upset. He couldn't find a tzaddik in the shul. And so he wrote to the Red Lubavitcher Rebbe. He says, Rebbe, I came to the shul and asked for a tzaddik. And nobody could help me. What's, what, do, what, am I, what am I to learn from this? The Rebbe says, maybe you would learn from this. That you're looking in the wrong places. You want to find that tzaddik? You want to find a good person? 
Don't look outside to find other good people. Look into yourself, into your own soul. That's where you find the tzaddik. So says, when a baby is born, when a child is born, we make the child swear that there'll be a tzaddik. Tzaddik at them. Not to be an evil person. Question is, what does it mean we make the child promise? It says when the child is still in the mother's womb, an angel comes down and makes the child promise he'll be a tzaddik. What, is, what does that mean? So let's explain the chassidus. And we make him swear, we give him strength. Hashem gives every person the strength to be a tzaddik because they have the righteousness within so already when the child is in the mother's womb, already, already then they have the ability to be a tzaddik. So where is the righteousness? The righteousness is on the inside, the Rebbe said. Go look in yourself. You want to find the tzaddik? Don't look outside. Find the tzaddik inside yourself. And so that is, that's a, a completely different approach. Is, is that You don't need to look outside. You have to look inside yourself to find that. And that's where you find your freedom. That's where you find who you are. Many people ask a very great philosophical question. How is it possible God says he gives us free choice? What kind of free choice is there in life? We're constantly being influenced by influencers. Now today there's a big thing online. There's influencers. People, that their job is to influence you. People who influence, they're influenced by movie stars, by other people, by people online. And we, we, we don't make our own decisions. So where do we have freedom of choice? We, we're, just, we're just being blown around with, with the word the way the winds go, winds of times. We're not making our own choices. We're being bombarded by, by advertisements, by things around us, by the people we see, the people we meet, and they're telling us what to do. We have no free choice. The answer is we do have free choice because our, our free choice is to dig, dig deep inside ourselves to a place that's not influenced by the outside. That's what we call Anushama. And that's where free choice is. So freedom of choice is by finding ourselves, by finding a part of ourselves that's not influenced by the outside world. And then we have freedom of choice. That's where we can find true freedom. So you want to know where freedom is freedom? Of course, it needs to be granted by the world around us. But the greatest freedom is, as we said before, when you're free on the inside, you find the freedom that you have, the natural freedom, your, your connection to Hashem, your connection to the Torah, your connection to the mitzvahs. That is where you find your freedom. So every morning we wake up in the morning and we say, Matira surim Hashem, please release those that are bound. We're not necessarily talking about prisoners in jail, because we're not in jail. We're not even necessarily talking about people that are being bombarded by the anti-Semites like in the days of the Holocaust, because we're not necessarily there. We have maybe a little bit of a power to, to control ourselves from our lust for money and for other lusts in this world. It's another form. But the deepest form of freedom is to dig beyond all of that and to go inside ourselves, and that's where we'll find true freedom. So the bracha to us and all of us is to be truly free people by finding Hashem within us. Hashem is the only one that's not influenced by anything at all. He makes decisions because he wants to make those decisions. And we should also have the power to make those decisions by connecting ourselves to Hashem and finding the tzaddik within us that is not influenced by the world around us and is able to be truly free. Have a Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Good Shabbos and a good week. And uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully we'll remind again all the other people that fell asleep because I wasn't here last week. So we'll remind them about the shiur. And anyone have any questions? Any questions from anybody? Thank you, Rebbe. Very interesting. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Basil. Thank, thank you. you. I couldn't talk. I good Shabbos to everybody. Good Chavez. Thank you. Good Chavez, good Chavez. Good Chavez. Joy, we're ending the class now. All the best. Thank you. Okay. We're finishing up. You can see it online. We have we have a we have a
a video of it. Okay, Chavez. Okay. Yeah, Shabbat Shalom. I'll pick it up online. Thanks, Rebbe.